Hey guys, so we've moved up to a performance model 3 now and one of the things we wanted to test was or show was how much power the battery can supply at different temperatures. So we've just done a pull at 15 degrees Celsius and we'll do 25, 35, 45 and maybe one even hotter than that and we'll keep the battery at 90% uh, state of charge. So <clears throat> we'll be able to really show you how the power changes with the temperature of the battery clearly on the dyno and over a full range of the uh, motor RPM. And I know a lot of you asked before, uh, you wanted to see the RPM go higher than 11,000. So now we're doing pulls up to 14,000 uh, RPM. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. We've updated the dash on the Motex so you can see all the relevant channels. So that'll be in the video. And yeah, it's a pretty cool little test. Oh shit. Oh, that. And he broke it. It was in foot pads, not newton meters. Okay, so we did our first pull. The battery was only 15 degrees Celsius, so most likely the limit wasn't the actual battery itself, and it was probably a software limit protecting the battery from using too much power when it was that cold. Um, now we're preheating to supercharger, so the coolant temperature has come up already, a few degrees, and we'll get the battery up to 25 degrees. We'll let it rest there for a few minutes and charge back up to 90. Um, because when you're preheating the battery, it takes some time for that heat to get into the cells and balance across the whole pack. So it's not really fair if we've heated the front half of the pack, but the back half is still kind of cold. So we'll let it sit for a few minutes after we heat it up and um, charge it back up to 90 and let it sit for, and then we should be pretty stable. So do that 25. What do you think, Jess? We're at 440. 455. Okay, I'm going to say 465. All right, All right here we go. Okay. Four seventy three, Jess. Okay, that was pull two. Uh, we had the battery at twenty five degrees, uh, ninety ninety percent state of charge. And we were at, uh, at the same RPM, 465, so that was my guess. But actually it made more than that earlier on. Um, with a little bit of like a, sometimes when the dyno cl clamps, it, it results in a little bit of a high reading. So I'm gonna stick with my 465, but it was about 470 as a, as a maximum at 25 degrees. So now we'll go to 35. And what do you think, Jess? Is it gonna keep going up? Well, if I tell you the answer, then it's not really your uh, guess. Four 75. 475. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe a little tiny higher than that. You have to but pick a different That's probably number. pretty close. I'll say, are we ignoring that peak that the dyno might do? Yeah. yeah so at the same RPM there, 475 is a good guess. Yeah. I know. Let's we'll say 479. All right, price is right. <laughs> I 
won that one again. Okay, that was pull number three. We almost went over the torque limit on the dyno. It just made it. Um, but if we ignore that, right after we were at 490 horsepower. So that exceeded 487, 487. So that exceeded my guess and it exceeded Jesse's guess. So yeah, 10 degrees is right about 20 horsepower. From 25 to 35 is about 20 horsepower. Is it gonna keep happening? And that carries all the way to 14,000 RPM. Yep. So we're about 45 Celsius and 55 Celsius. Well, the internal resistance of the battery will continue to go down as the battery gets hotter. So I think 45 will be more and 55 will be more. And of course you have to keep in mind that if you start at 55, you're gonna be able to run for exactly two seconds before you hit the limit. <laughs> yeah. So you have to balance that. And we'll talk, once we have all the information, we'll talk about that. But um, it's pretty cool, isn't it? We're, we're graphing it out pretty clearly here. We'll figure it out for you drag racers out it's not there. Like it's not like it's all the same. And we know that. I mean, of course, the Cheetah motor, whatever, the Model S stuff would preheat the battery for drag racing or ludicrous mode did that something. So you can do that with your Model 3 by navigating to supercharger. So if you're drag racing, uh, you want to navigate to supercharger. You're not going to know how hot your car is getting unless you have product placement, <laughs> Motec Dash. <laughs> That's really, really smooth. I'm sure there's apps. Yeah, there's all kinds of cheap apps, but the Motec Dash is pretty cool. I really like it. Buy Motec. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> I apologize for peddling our products. Um, you'll want to pretty much heat it all the way, I would say, for drag racing. You probably want to get to 50, but let's see the difference. We'll do 45 now, and then we'll do like 53 or something, as it, hot as it'll it go. It climbs almost 5 degrees during one pull. Yeah, it did climb a lot, didn't it? Mm -hmm. But part of that, too, is the way we're heating it, right? So we're heating it um, with the coolant, and then you've got the pull. So I don't know... Yeah, I mean, in 12 seconds, five degrees, you would be, you'd overheat it in two minutes. So that, that's not totally relevant. Oh, hello. All right, I don't really remember where we left off on that last one when the phone rang, but uh, we were at, yeah, 50 horsepower for 20 degrees Celsius. Keeping in mind that the first one might have been some of the battery protection as well. But it might not have been. I mean, that, that might just be all it can do. Um, so now we're going up to 45. Stay tuned. Less power now. No. I think that might be the dyno though, but it's quite strange. Okay, so no more power gains actually at higher battery temperatures. So a little bit surprising. But part of that was as well the fact that we can't get the battery any hotter than 45 because it stops navigating the supercharger and I didn't feel like writing a bunch of more code to force the thing to start heating itself. So um, that could be done. I don't really think there's a benefit to that. Preheating to 45 degrees Celsius is pretty much as hot as you'd ever want to go. And maybe we'll try this test again and just see if we missed anything because at the lower RPM we were seeing a little bit less power for some strange reason uh, on the pulls at the end. So there could have been something with some minor thing with the dyno or who knows. Maybe the motor's going to explode. But the, the loss was front and rear evenly so that makes me feel better. Yeah, I hope you learned something though. Uh, we certainly did. It wasn't as linear as we thought. Once we got to about 35 degrees Celsius it was pretty much the same from then on up, um, so that was interesting. And uh, yeah, we look forward to going to the racetrack, hopefully with this thing pretty soon. Everything's closed here right now, but um, at the end of April, hopefully end of May, we'll be able to go out and party. 
Hey guys, I just wanted to add some footage to the end of this video showing some of the data from the dyno. Uh, I know when we were testing at warmer temperatures, we weren't seeing the extra power that we were expecting. So we have here a graph uh, of the data we captured that's showing the battery current, the voltage of the battery pack, the temperature, and the power, which is just the current times the voltage. And one thing that stands out right away, if we just drag over here, um, so this is about halfway through the pull, the voltage, the current is quite similar, the voltage is up 19 volts, so it should be making heaps more power. So one of two things are happening here, either because of these oscillations that were happening early in the pull, and part of that is, we believe, due to the dyno, um, the two, basically the two sides were not perfectly in balance, and so what happens is the Tesla and the dyno start fighting each other, the Tesla starts reducing and adding power, to try and get the, you know, the spinning open diff wheel to stop spinning. Meanwhile, the dyno is also grabbing that wheel too quickly, and they just start kind of fighting back and forth. And it takes some time before that sorts itself out. So one of two things are happening here: either the drive unit is keeping some power out of it until it sees things stabilize, and we can see right at the end of the pull, the battery current starts to match up. Or the other thing that could be happening is Tesla could just have programmed the car to have the same total power. So as the battery temperature gets higher, it's already, it's already able to make that power at 35 degrees Celsius. So even though the battery has more available power because the internal resistance is lower and it doesn't have as much voltage sag, you can see here that it's still actually making more battery power. So even though we're down 37 amps from the battery, because we're up 20 volts, we end up with a net 7.3 kilowatts more at this specific point in time. So basically what I'm saying is, a warmer battery should be able to make more power absolutely 100%. Uh, it's not totally clear because of this oscillation issue on the dyno, whether the difference, we're not seeing the difference because the drive unit is, hasn't fully put the power back in yet, or if it's because Tesla's purposely keeping power out uh, to just hold this target power level. Uh, which would make sense. They just want to give the car having the same acceleration all the time. Once it can achieve that level, it just starts to slowly pull itself back. As we can see here, we've got just that 30 or 40 uh, amps of less current. So we've got voltage available. We can push harder. We can make more power, but we're not right now. It is software limited, whether it's because of this oscillation or because that's the way it's programmed. We'll have to check into our data some more, do some more controlled tests to see, but it should be pretty easy to figure out. All right, guys, all the best.